Okay, so hi everyone, my name is Sergei Shumilo and I'm going to present our new work, Nux Graybox Hypervisor Fuzzing using fast snapshots in the fiend types. So what's the basic motivation behind this work? Well, we all know and use hypervisors for different tasks. They are basically the foundation for modern cloud computing, but they're also useful to add an additional uh, separation and security layer. And in this paper, basically, we wanted to show that we're able to find security vulnerabilities for one specific threat model where an attacker has full control over one virtual machine. And in this scenario, there are um, different possible attacks like a local denial of service, a host level denial of service, or the game over scenario where an attacker basically escalates privileges to the host level. And there are also uh, related work in this field like VDF, which basically is an approach to use AFL and um, different parts of QMU and then basically fuss them in isolation by recompiling them using the AFL compiler. And then there is Hypercube, it's a black box fuzzing approach and at the same time, it's also an operating system which you can basically boot in any x86 hypervisor. And in our approach, we wanted to, to take Hypercube, so we want to have the same properties of full control over one virtual machine and combine them with KFI Red Queen. Both are uh, hypervisor assisted, coverage guided fuzzers for, for basically binaries. Um, the hypervisor they are using utilizes a new Intel feature called Intel PT for coverage information and we also add some other improvements. So this is basically Nux, our approach. So our design, our implementation, so we made the following contributions like to the best of our knowledge this is the very first coverage guided hypervisor fuzzer for unmodified targets so you don't have to recompile things. Uh, we also built a fast snapshot mechanism for very stateful code like hypervisors so we can recover a predefined state after each fuzzing iteration and then we also use a fiend type mutation engine which expects a specification of the target but using this fiend type mutation engine we're able to fuzz complex targets or interfaces so coverage guidance hypervisor fuzzing first so to recap this is the setup used for hypercube the target is actually the hypervisor running at host level, LO, and inside the virtual machine, level 1, runs Hypercube OS, and at some point Hypercube OS will start to interface with, with the target hypervisor, which is basically fuzzing. Um, on the other hand, there is KFI Red Queen, um, at L2 there is a hypervisor called KVMPT, but this is not the target. This hypervisor is used to get information about what is happening inside the virtual machine. And inside the virtual machine there is a target operating system or a target program, so it doesn't matter if it's, if it's an operating system component or user space application. And then we are using a special component called agent, and this agent basically expects data from the fuzzer, which runs outside and then passes the, the basically the, the payload, the, the fast payload to uh, the target itself. And yeah, Nux is basically a combination of both of them. So um, we are running, so we are using our KVMPT at LO and inside the virtual machine is the target hypervisor we want to fast and this target hypervisor's, uh, target hypervisor basically boots uh, Hypercube OS, a modified version of it, and then Hypercube OS becomes actually the agent component which expects data from the fuzzer and then provides the, the payload um, somehow to the target hypervisor. And of course this does not work out of the box, so we made uh, some modification to KVMPT, like we introduced new hyper calls for the communication between Hypercube OS and the fuzzer. Um, we locked Intel PT tracing to the target hypervisor itself, so at L1, and we also built IntraVM um, shared memory capabilities for LO to L2 communication. Our fast snapshot mechanism is basically based on QMU's implementation and for memory snapshots basically um, QMU relies on dirty bitmaps. This works quite well but unfortunately a bitmap um, grows with the size of the allocated memory to uh, the of, of a virtual machine basically and instead we are using uh, next to the bitmap which you have to work after each um, reset basically a dirty stack and then every address is, is pushed into the stack and then we can get the addresses, fix them and that's basically it. So it's super fast. And the device stage reset basically is um, quite slow as well. 
Um, this is due to a heavy data structure used by QMU. And what we basically did, um, we translate everything into other representation, which is effectively just a list of addresses and sizes, super easy. And then we can execute a sequence of memory, uh, of mem copy calls and yeah. For the disk layer, we are using an additional copy on write layer. Everything is stored in memory and to reset a virtual machine to get, yeah, basically we, we have to get rid of, of the data and effectively this is a 01 operation. So super fast. And since this is super fast, we are using a fast snapshot after each fuzzing iteration. To generate inputs, we are using the if, uh, if type mutation engine and this um, engine expects a specification of the target. And to give you an impression, so for device emulators, for instance, there are different interfaces like memory mapped IO, uh, ledger CIO, hypercodes, and some uh, device emulators, uh, they also do uh, direct memory access. So basically they are at some point read and write the guest memory. And we built a specification for XHCI. XHCI is basically the USB 3.0 controller for Intel. And at first, it looks super easy. There are just a bunch of registers you can read and write from, but that's not all. Since XHCI expects via DMA that in the guest memory, there are special data structures allocated and prepared, like in this case, a command ring. A command ring holds so-called transfer ring blocks, TRBs, and each TRB holds data or a pointer to another DMA region or even another pointer to another ring. So it's quite complex. And our approach basically is well, let's use a bytecode interpreter and build um, specific handlers for specific tasks like allocating a command ring, enabling this command ring, pushing data to the command ring, or even a free operation. And to generate those programs, at first it looks like, yeah, that it would be a good idea to use a, um, a grammar fuzzer. But unfortunately, a grammar fuzzer is maybe not the best fitting approach. Um, for that, simply because we are using types like command ring, TRB message, and so on. And at some point, we also want to use AFL style mutations for specific parts of the input. And we also need a way to express that at some point, a resource is not available anymore, like after um, calling free. And instead of a tree um, representation, like a yeah, grammar fuzzer would use, we're using a graph representation in basically um, in inside the, the, the fuzzing engine and um, the fuzzer operates on nodes and each node basically co contains a handler, um, some data and a set of input outputs and each input output is typed. So there are different types and this is basically one specification and then the fuzzer is able to generate from the specification different graphs. We can pass the graph or effectively the bytecode um, to the target and if something interesting happens we can keep this bytecode, this input and then do further operations like AFL style data mutations on it. We can do more advanced uh, operations like node splicing or even other operations on a node graph like adding new nodes. And yeah, we did that for XHCI, but we also yeah, wrote a very simple specification to emulate Hypercube's behavior. And we did an experiment like, like this. So we are comparing Nux using a very simple specification and Hypercube. And as you can see, over time, Nux gets better, except for one target, it's the e E1K device emulator. We are not sure um, why this happens, but we believe it has something to do with the way. Um, so basically, we have very short time frames due to the fact that we are snapshotting or restoring a snapshot after each iteration. But if you are using a very complex specification like we did for XHCI, um, then basically this will improve coverage. And with this specification, we are also able to um, find different bugs. For instance, in Beehive, um, the fuzzer was able to find an interesting bug in this code. It's uh, an infinite loop bug. Um, and the fuzzer at some point started to allocate a new command ring, put a TRB link type with a pointer to itself. And then after the next fetch, the device emulator will basically stuck at this point. But we're, we're also able to find 
more interesting bugs, for instance, in QMU and the XHCI implementation used after pre write. And yeah, if you fuss different hypervisors, you will find bugs, obviously. So nothing special. And we also did an experiment to compare um, the original QMU implementation versus Nux. And as you can see, QMU um, performs quite poorly, like 10 executions at best. And um, Nux is more comparable to AFL fork. But it's a little bit slower, but you have to consider that um, we are restoring a full virtual machine, whereas AFL fork basically creates a new process. So to summarize, um, to the best of our knowledge, this is the very first coverage guided hypervisor fuzzer for yeah, unmodified targets. And it's super interesting that we are able to outperform a fast blind fuzzer over time. But if you're using a specification, then it gets even better. And yeah, with this approach, you are now able to fast not only um, the kernel space and user space, but also basically ring minus one, so hypervisor level code. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, um, yeah, feel free to send us a mail. And yeah, thanks again.